All right, Jesse on fire, welcome back to the channel. Now, it looks like Dana White has finally revealed what he's gonna do with Hamza Shemaev. And you know where I found that out? On Chael's channel, when he did a video that I think he was responding to my video from. And uh, I'll explain all that in a second, but if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. Now, lots of complications having to do with what to do with Hamza. I have been looking at the situation kind of like, they should have done the Burns fight, but I heard something about the Burns fight. I heard that someone else threw water on that before. It sounds like a bunch of people killed that fight. We'll talk about that too. But the problem that you have is that everyone is scared of Hamza, it looks like. Okay, so here's the deal. When I said that Chael was responding to my video, this is what happened, right? So a lot of you guys have seen this video, but so I did a video, well, actually first Chael did a video where he was saying that it makes no sense, like he killed the Burns and Hamza fight. He was like, that may, anytime you guys see that, throw cold water on it, say no to that fight. And I was like, what the, why? And then, you know, I, I hypothesized in a separate video that it's because Burns is the worst matchup for Hamza. They do not want, they don't, like, they do not want Hamza to lose. I mean, bet your life on that. So that was my speculation then. Then I saw another video where Chael was saying, or might have actually been the same video, where he was saying that he should fight Neil Magny, right? Actually, it was the same video. He's saying, why would Burns go down and fight Hamzat? He's number three. It doesn't make any sense. He should fight Neil Magny. He should fight Neil Magny. He should fight Neil Magny because they're, you know, 10 and 11 or whatnot. And so I did a video after seeing the weasel say something very similar, and that was, I don't know, two, three days ago, where I was like, no, I was uh, on December 2nd, where I was like, dude, why are these guys giving such bad advice? Hamzat is the number one contender. If you think because he's in, you know, the 10 or 11 spot that it won't equal an immediate title shot for a number two or number three guy that beats Hamzat Shemaev, you're crazy. That's not true, that's wrong. That's not accurate. Like, that's not accurate. Hamzat's the number one contender. I did, and then I said, if I do a poll, who do you guys think is most likely to beat Kamaru Usman, and I do it, I'm telling you right now, without ever, without any shred of doubt, not having ever asked a single person, I can tell you right now that he's going to win that poll. And he did. He got like 68% of the votes. When I did that poll, it was like Hamza Chumayev 68, Colby Covington 22, okay? So between that, you got what, uh, 90% or something like that? So, I mean, it's case closed. He's the number one contender, right? So that was my point, was that saying that because he's ranked low that people shouldn't fight him is bad advice. So then... Two days ago, so two days after I posted that video, Chael just did a video, Everyone's Scared of Hamzat, and he revealed that Dana apparently had come out with a plan that included Hamzat fighting four more times before fighting for the title. I had not heard that. That's, that's, I heard that through Chael. Now, if you guys had seen that somewhere and, and that was kind of public information, I apologize, but I didn't know that, right? And I'm going to comment on that particular plan, but, uh, but first, let me just say, so Chael's point in that video, which is an excellent video, was he said that basically, if these guys won't fight Hamzat, then that's Hamzat beating them as far as, as, far as the world's concerned. It's, and I agree, 100%. If he's like, if these guys are like, no, nah, I won't fight him. And yo, know, because in his case, right, in Hamzat's case, if, if, if Chael saw my video, and that's why he did this video, which given the context seems very likely, it, you know, if he saw it, and then this is his response, I think that he thought about it, and he's like, he's right, of course, right? Like, of course, if these guys are, you know, normally if a guy's number 10, and, and another guy's number two, and he won't fight the second ranked guy, that is because it doesn't make any sense. Just like I said in my video before, where it's like, yeah, you're not gonna gain anything by beating that guy in a normal circumstance. Okay, but this is not a normal circumstance at all. There's nothing normal about this. Everyone knows that guy's a monster. A monster. I heard Michael Bisping say, I'm gonna tell you right now, if I'm at 85 right now, or I'm at 170, I'm letting someone else fight him. I don't want that guy. I let someone else someone else get their shot. And, and that's exactly what I said too. Now, Chael said that's pussy. And Chael said he would've fought him. And you know why Chael could say that? Because he would've. And you can just go off of his career to, to, to validate that. Chael took every fight. Chael went up to 205 to fight John Jones, dude. Think about that. When John Jones was John Jones, Chael was at 185. He had no 205 fights. He went up and fought John Jones at 205. He got worked. But you know what? That's gangster, dude. And he built a ton of hype for that fight. He got people to actually believe he might be able to beat him. Like, Chael took every fight. He took every risk. He can say whatever he wants about that, dude. So if he wants to call guys soft for not taking a fight with Hamzat, he's allowed to do that. Now, if other guys are thinking about their career and they're like, and they're looking at him and they're like, geez, man, 
I don't really want to take the risk of getting ragdolled and getting my face beating because you don't recover from that. You know, if you're if you're one of the guys that's perceived as one of the best guys in the division, you get worked like that. You really worked. I mean, that's valid because you're not just. Here's the thing: you say you're scared of the guy, and that's true. It's not like you're just scared of getting beaten up. Like that's that's not what it is. Like it's not it's not that right. I mean, it's probably partially that. But it's about your career. It's the thing people have been working for their entire life. And they're in the top five of the welterweight division. They're right there. They're so close they can touch it. They got one guy that some of them have already lost to. And they're thinking maybe he'll retire at some point. They want to be in position to get it. Or they might get another shot at it. And they're, they're, they're that close to their goal. They've given up everything to be in the position that they're in. And they look at Umza Shemaev objectively. And they're like, geez, man. Like, if I lose to this guy, I'm going night-night or I'm getting just ragdolled and beaten and that's it's hard to shake man like look at look at look at where Masvidal was before he, I mean you're talking about Kamaru Usman who is objectively better than every other person okay like think Masvidal everybody was like dude he's a, he's the guy he's the guy he can do it he can do it he can do it now a lot of people thought Kamaru was going to beat him but after he got like dirt napped like that I've watched I mean I, I still think he's super dangerous but I've watched the way people talk about him and it's completely different. Like they think because Kamaru Usman, the best welterweight in the world, completely unchallenged, it, he knocked him out. That now like Mas oh Masvidal's over now, man. Even Masvidal looked good in that fight before he got caught. You know, it's like the public's perception. And if you get taken down and just smashed, dude, like just smashed, that really hurts your career immensely. Look at like uh, Anthony Smith, right? Like. Anthony Smith has looked really good. He looked really good in his last fight. But, like, after that Glover to Teixeira fight, like, that's a hard visual to shake off. Like, you know, him getting just pulverized like that. I love Anthony Smith, man. But it, I'm just saying, like, that's what they're scared of. They're scared of losing everything that they've built by if they get dominated like that. But nonetheless, still scared. You know, still scared. And so Chael's point is, if you're offered a fight with Hamza and you won't take it because you're scared, that means Hamza beats you. And again, that does not apply. It doesn't apply normally if a person's ranked 10 and a person's ranked 3 or 4 or whatever. But it does in this case. It does. And so what I think actually happened here is Chael was either instructed or had some kind of ulterior motive to, to, to throw cold water on the Burns and Hamzat fight because otherwise I don't understand why he went so hard at it. Throw cold water, kill this fight, right? And then my response, I, I mean, I would, I, if I had to bet, I would bet 80% he saw the video. I mean, you know, 30, 30 some odd thousand people saw it. It's not a small number of people. Like you think that these guys aren't watching videos about this stuff? And then his response was like, I think I should shed some clarity and then he made mine even better because what he said is totally accurate. It's like, if they offer him a fight, they won't take it. They lose in this case. And I, I, I agree with that. Like, I totally agree. It's like, you know, a guy shouldn't just get to duck a guy because he's so dangerous and scary. Even if I'm saying it probably would be the smart career move. But what, he, but, but what Chell's point was is and I probably did a very bad job of making this point, is that if Dana says he's got four fights before the title and he's at number 10 and you can't get these guys to fight him, then he jumps them in line for title shots, right? Like you got to chop that for four fights. Who are you going to get that's going to, which four guys are going to fight him, dude? You got Neil Magny. I think you're going to, I think you're stuck with Neil Magny. I mean, I'm not saying that like as a negative towards Neil Magny. I'm just saying like if you had designs on jumping him up higher, I think you got... I think you got Brady. I think you got. Uh, I think you got Brady. Maybe would take it. I think. I think Brady should take it because he's at a like that guy. If he could win that fight, like if he's really willing to put it all on the line, Brady. If he beat Hamzat, would. Oh man, with the with those tattoos, beats Hamzat Shemaev. He'll be on his. I mean, that he would become an absolute superstar if he beat Hamzat. Huge risk though huge risk but you got Brady you got you got uh, Neil Magny down there and then if let's say he beat both those guys then you know these people have no they have no excuse you either have to fight him or he's gonna jump in line he's gonna need a title shot so maybe two fights in a title shot you know but at the same time if Leon loses to Hamza I'm sorry loses to, to Kamaru Usman I mean you don't you got slim pickings man 
You got slim pickings. Kamar, I mean, Hamza could be one dominant victory from a title shot. Maybe. But, uh, but anyway. So yeah, Chell, if you saw my video and you responded, I thought your video was brilliant, this last one. The, uh, the one that I was referencing. You also did an excellent one. He also did an excellent one about Justin Gaethje coming into the, into the octagon after the, after, if Charles Oliveira wins. Um, and I actually, reading between the lines of that video, which I'm going to do in my next video, I think he was saying something that maybe I'm injecting into there that it wasn't really there, but I'm pretty sure because the whole thing was kind of centered around Oliveira winning, which anyway, I'll talk about that in my next video. But anyway, uh, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. Tell your friends, peace. 100%. And it's gonna do way more buys. It's gonna be more successful. I'm excited to watch it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm way more excited to watch it because I'm gonna tell you right now, think about this. Think about this. So Tyron Woodley went through what? I don't know, three, four fights where he just, w I mean, well, I mean, everybody could kind of break my balls and say, well, his whole career. But I'm gonna say like at least the, the, the three or four that he lost, he couldn't, he wouldn't pull the trigger, right? Like he would not pull the trigger and he got and he and he paid for it right how do you do in the luke fight right because in the luke fight they were like do not let your back hit the cage and he went in there bombing that luke and tyron woodley fight was bananas i know it was only one one round and he got caught but that fight was awesome like that fight was awesome and tyron woodley that clearly means he listens dude like he does listen like he listens when he's really taking heavy shit. Like he took a bunch of criticism going into the Luke fight and he responded. And I'm telling you right now, he lost to Jake Paul and he listened to everybody. He just needed to pull the trigger. He's winning when he's pulling the trigger. He's winning when he's pulling the I guarantee you, I absolutely 100% guarantee you when he gets in there with Jake Paul again, he's gonna be pulling the trigger. He's gonna throw more punches, absolutely guaranteed. He's not gonna rely on the fact that he's gonna get a knockout. He's going to throw more punches, guaranteed. So I'm excited. I am very excited about that. But going back to the original point that I was making about rolling with your current situation, which is an ever-changing, evolving situation. Think about that. Think about that. As I have spoken about what Dustin Poirier should have done with Conor McGregor. I'm not letting it go, dude. I'm not letting it go. So if Dustin would have done the thing that I said, then when they start considering giving Conor other fights, so Dustin Poirier, he wins, right? Like he wins this lightweight championship, okay? Now, Chael Sonnen just did a great video. He did a couple great videos, man. He did a couple exceptional videos. He responded to the, well, I don't know if he was directly responding to mine. I, th I found it, uh, you know, I found it curious. I did a video that Chael is wrong. Uh, he's saying that, you know, uh, he's saying that Hamza Shumayev should fight the Neil Magny and not fight the top guys. And I did the video going, Chael's wrong. That doesn't make any sense. Comes out or Hamza is actually the number one contender. Like the, that's that's not. I mean, and then Chael two days later did the video where he was like, "If everybody's scared of Hamza, then you got to jump him in line uh, up to the title shot." Anyway, but that one was really good. And then he also talked about uh, he talked about Gaethje getting into the cage and and calling out. Uh, you know, he was talking about Charles though. Uh, he was talking specifically about Charles when he was saying that. He said, if Charles wins, they got to bring Gaethje into the cage, right? And so that leads you to believe that if Dustin wins, there's probably, I mean, because he always knows what's going on with the UFC, obviously, right? Like, I'm speculating. He knows, at least a lot of the time. He's, he, is the, he is the YouTube spokesman or, uh, you know, mouthpiece for the UFC. And so when he's specifically talking about Charles Oliveira, when it comes to Dustin, or I'm sorry, uh, Justin Gaethje going into the cage, which is exactly what that sounded like to me, then what that means is there's a plan for Dustin. He's probably going to 170 and fight Connor. But, uh, but nonetheless, what if Nate Diaz actually gets into the mix here, right? Like, what if Nate Diaz actually gets in the mix for real and they're talking about Connor and Nate? Like, Dustin still needs to fight for that fight, man. He still needs to fight for that Connor fight. Because what if Connor decides, eh, I don't know if I want to fight that guy again. Maybe I'll fight someone else and then I'll fight him. You know, maybe I could build the fight, especially if Dustin's the the lightweight champion of the world, and Connor gets a you know gets an idea that he wants to go beat someone at 170. Then he wants to fight Dustin in the rematch because it'll essentially assure him a 155 title shot if he wins. But then he doesn't win, right? And then he like he doesn't win the 170 pound fight. It's like 
There are many scenarios that even if Dustin wants that $10 million payday, he won't get it if he doesn't keep that beef hot. Like he's gotta keep it hot. Hot beef, hot beef, be eating it all the time. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's what I got. Congratulations, Tyron, excellent work. You are gonna get paid, son. Dustin, you're gonna get paid too, dog. Good luck in your fight. I'm rooting for you. Let's do this. Love you guys. What's up, Cheeto Vera? Good seeing you yesterday. Peace.